The thing I like about my discography is how varied it is. I mean, there's everything from jazz to, to rock and roll to, you know, folk music. There's, it's, it, there's everything is in there, the blues. And I think just having, not being pigeonholed into just doing one thing is, is I think has served me well. Being a fan of all music, it's being able to produce all music. Joe Walsh, he was the lead singer and guitar player in the James Gang. So when I signed them to their first record, you know, he was like 22 years old. So I did all his stuff up until, you know, five or six albums into his career. So they were lifelong buddies. Another artist it was Rick Derringer that I produced, All American Boy, which had rock and roll hoochie coo on it, which is a big smash hit. And when, when he, when I produced that for him, he was producing Edgar Winter and Johnny Winter, and he asked me if I'd want to come and help him with an Edgar Winter and a Johnny Winter album. So I did with uh, Edgar, and one of the results of that was Frankenstein, which uh, was on an album called They Only Come Out at Night. And then shortly after that, we did a, uh, Still Alive and Well with, uh, with Johnny Winter. And the Jay Giles Band is another band I did like seven albums with. So there were six comedians disguised as a rock band. They were hysterical. And uh, Jay Ferguson, Thunder Island. Uh, John Lee Hooker, did an album with him with a bunch of great, great players. Uh, Jimmy Weatherspoon, a blues singer. Uh, Pharaoh Sanders, a jazz bass player. Jazz horn player, made with, played bass too. and. It's all over the map. Once I started working with the Eagles, well, as, as time went on during like one of these nights in Hotel California, we would work three or four weeks straight and then take a couple of weeks off and three or four weeks straight and take a couple of weeks off. So there was, I had to turn work down because I was committed to, you know, this is the main, the main squeeze, if you will. And I, and I had to, uh, you know, just concentrate on the Eagles. Any names that we would know? Um, Rolling Stones. <laughs> you might know them. Maybe. Wow. <laughs> and a couple others. I, I can't really off the top of my head remember right now. But yeah, it was, like I said, the Eagles were a full-time job. Bob was a real good friend with Glenn Fry because they both grew up in Detroit together. And as a matter of fact, Glenn was in Bob's, one of Bob's early bands and sang, on, sang background on Ramblin' Gamblin' Man and played acoustic guitar. And so they knew each other forever. So then when, when I was producing the Eagles and having success with them and Bob would hang out, and, you know, he was just, he was one of the guys. He'd come and hang out. So when I did get a break, he said, would you like to produce me? And I said, of course, you know, because I mean, I love Midwest rock and roll. I'm from Michigan, he's from Michigan. What's not to like? So uh, we hooked up and we, I did about four or five cuts on his Against the Wind album and Against the Wind being one of them. And uh, the thing I'm proudest about that is that was his only number one record. And I figured, if anybody's going to do it, it better be me. <laughs> one I haven't spoken of yet today is, is a, my, one of my dearest friends, Michael Stanley. I signed Michael Stanley, who was in a band called Silk, in like 1968 and, and made an album with him for ABC when I was, you know, in New York. And that did not happen. It, it, was, it maybe got up to 161 one week and then dropped out of sight. <clears throat> so years later, I opened my own label, Tumbleweed, when I moved to Denver. And I called Michael up. I said, are you still writing songs? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm writing songs all the time. So I said, well, come on out here to Denver and play me some of these songs. So I did, I put a band together around him and recorded an album with him. And it was, he had a little bit of success. And then one thing led to another, and we had two or three albums of him as basically a solo artist, folk, almost folk, folk rock kind of artist. And then he put a rock band together. It was the Michael Stanley Band. And I made their first three or four albums, and they had some success, and they were huge in the Midwest, huge everywhere. You know, they're from Cleveland, huge in Cleveland, huge in Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Detroit. And for some reason, we could never break anything outside of the upper Midwest. And to this day, I'm still making records with Michael Stanley. He, he'll work in his home studio, 
put together an album's worth of tunes and then call me when he's ready and I'll take a bunch of gear out of my studio, put it in the car, drive up and we'll hang out for three weeks mixing and having fun.